Hello, and welcome to the New York Baltic Film Festival and this year's virtual edition. It is a pleasure to welcome viewers from all over the US as we adapt to this new digital format. Established in 2018, the New York Baltic Film Festival is presented by Scandinavia House and organized by the Consul General of Estonia, the Consul General of Lithuania, and the Consulate of Latvia in New York. Financial support for the festival comes from the Estonian Film Institute, National Film Center of Latvia, and the Lithuanian Film Center, with additional support by the Lithuanian Cultural Institute, the American Latvian Association, LV100, and the Embassy of Latvia in the US. Today, we are speaking with the Latvian director of Oleg, Joris Kuristis, I apologize for my pronunciation, uh, and the lead actor is also joining us today, Valentin Novopolsky and it is moderated by the head of programs for the festival, Yula Rositsi. The festival is divided into three sections and Oleg is screening in the third and final section called Looking Forward or Looking Inward and Forward Baltic Showcase, uh, screening from November 12th through November 15th. Now, please welcome everyone to the screen. Hello. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us um, for our last weekend. And uh, Valentin, you're actually the first actor to join us, so that's that's going to be interesting to add you to the conversation. Um, so maybe just to kind of get the ball rolling, if each of you could like um, start by maybe t uh, telling us where you're calling from and um, how Corona has affected your like artistic careers and your your output this year. Yuri, um, <laughs> I'm uh, calling <laughs> from uh, Riga, from Latvia. Um, uh, up until autumn, it was Corona quiet here. We had only like less than 10 cases a day or something like that. But uh, for the last few weeks, it has really went uh, spiraled up. Uh, but anyway, I mean, uh, professionally, it has affected that uh, I was supposed to shoot my new film um, uh, end of this autumn, early next spring, but because of all of this, we already predicted that that probably won't be possible, so we postponed it to late 2021, 20, so, so basically shooting a year later, and that is, uh, that is basically killing my nerves, <laughs> because I have to, I have to kind of, uh, in a way, this thing is inside me, but I have—I know I, I can't think about it all the time because then I will just go mad. And then so I'm trying to do other things in between. So I've been renovating the house. <laughs> and then for me, but like now it's we're on the lockdown, on the second lockdown that from yesterday, I suppose. And so uh, we won't ha uh, have any performances in the theater, but it was uh, an experience for quite quite uh, an interesting one but just before after the first wave and uh, till now like I've, I've managed to to have a premiere a big premiere in the theater and also to shoot a feature movie so like it was very intense just just this period between the waves was like crazy so you're resting basically <laughs> yes yes i'm not so yeah I'm actually okay with the second wave. <laughs> right. So before we get into kind of the details of the film itself, I think, you know, one of the things that obviously, um, especially Latvians are maybe shouting about is that it went to Cannes, to Director's Fortnight. Um, can you both talk about this experience? Like, were you both there? What was it like as um, a filmmaker and an actor, you know, to be, to be in such a, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's like the dream place to get to, right? Like what was your experience of being there and, and, and maybe for you it is more like, has that uh, helped the film in any way? Like what has it done for your career? Well, I think maybe you start. <laughs> um, okay, it was, uh, yeah, it was like uh, a year, probably a year, one year before that, uh, if anyone would tell me, would have told me that I will go there, I wouldn't believe. Uh, but it happened and so actually when Yuris called me and told me that we'll have a premiere in Cannes I said yeah yeah right so where like in Cannes like in Cannes yes so it, it was quite difficult to believe although uh, Yuris and, and our DOP uh, as I think uh, they 
believed from the very beginning that, that it will be something interesting. And uh, I don't know, it was actually, if, if to be sincere, I was, uh, it was a quite difficult for me from the beginning, from, from the start, because uh, maybe I'm not this kind of person who enjoys all this, you know, fuzz and everything, but uh, in the end, it, it was very good because this, our program, this um, two weeks of the director's fortnight, it was not so posh. It was, I don't know, cozy and warm and there were, there were some really good movies and actually the atmosphere is crazy. Like the whole, the whole town is crazy about about cinema about movies about what you are doing and so yeah it's this i think it was a lifetime you know like uh experience and, and plenty of memories yeah i mean i can i can uh, agree with valentin uh i remember it we were um, it was easter in in latvia when uh, I was with my cousins and and we got this call that because it, it was always on the on the border we knew that it's in the final not the pre-final list but it was always on the border so so when we got the news I, it was it was great for the film because i've always believed that uh, that uh, the reason for all of these uh, festivals is to reach as as much audience as possible uh, so, so basically, also for the film, it was good because uh, straight away we had uh, international sales uh, uh, company and and with a, with a normal track record, let's say. And uh, so they really worked with the film. And obviously, if you have the cans, even if the even if it's the director's the Fortnite, not the main competition, still if you have that label, it's it's. Uh, you know the the doors open uh, for 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 a lot of uh, viewers and and for me that was the main main thing basically that the story travels and 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 talks to the audience and that the audience has a discussion with it um of course i mean when when being there we were i think quite a lot of people i mean uh, the cast were there like five or six of them and and it was uh, you know i mean the the i think except the gaffer was there <laughs> i mean everyone else was really there so it, it really felt great that most of the core team creative and technical also you know was 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 there and uh, it, it felt like a great uh, great place where where you know to, to to bring the film to the audiences where you know where it comes comes to light and uh, of course they really take care of of the film and it was it was uh, well taken care of and because there was also french distribution planned later on so there was a good uh, good opportunity also to, to to speak to the french press there because they were there already so it's it's it a lot of things came together which really helped the film you know, to, 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 to reach the audiences. Um, so, so career wise, I think it was obviously, I mean, I mean, I always see this, uh, I think it was uh, my DOP who told me when, uh, when we shot my previous film, Modris together, uh, he told me that, uh, you know, when your next film is coming out, be ready with the, with the script for the next film basically when this film is coming out be ready with the script of the next film and i already had started work i think uh, a year before on, on on this new script so 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 you know when when all of this was coming out and there was kind of this publicity it obviously was a good chance for 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 a filmmaker coming from a country where there's three maybe four films made a year you know to to kind of have this uh, foot in the door and and to talk about this new idea and and why 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 you want to do it and and so on so so we um we i don't know in english there's a saying but we were hitting the iron while it's hot you know so so we so already in the summer uh, with the producer we were applying for first uh, funds and that really the success of oleg obviously helped to push the next project and 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 uh, that's why we we were in a way ready to shoot 
end of this year, but because of COVID, we had to put it back a bit. Right. Um, so as far as I understand, the film is based on a real person. And can you talk about how you found that story? And Valentin, how, how was it for you knowing that there was a real real human behind the, the character you were playing? I think it's Yuri's story. Yeah, there's just a couple of words that for me, you know, like, uh, I didn't, I didn't really care for like, to, to be honest, like, I mean, uh, it, it was, I cared that just about it, it was very true. Uh, I don't know, very, quite difficult. Like it was, it was hurting, you know, me, I just felt it. And so this was the, the, the most important thing. And also when I came back here, I heard already like plenty of stories that like got come just guys just come to me and say like, like, this is a story about me. This is my story, like plenty of them. My cousin actually told me that. I haven't, wow. I had no, I had no idea that he had something like this. So, yeah. Hmm. yeah I mean, it, 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 I mean, the story came, came in the winter of 2013. I was then finishing Modris, the shooting of Modris, uh, and, and this, uh, former uh, colleague of mine, uh, uh, acquaintance, uh, this uh, journalist, uh, he called me or wrote me, I don't remember, and he said that he had just interviewed this uh, guy and he's preparing a kind of a, kind of a feature article for this magazine, weekly magazine, and, and that it's kind of a really shocking story and, and am I interested in reading it? And of course I, I read it and, and that was really yeah, I mean, it triggered something in me, and and uh, then uh, I asked uh, for the full interview because in the article it was only part of it, and and there it was, it was I don't know, Valentin, if did I give you this full interview or no? I think no, I gave no, it. you just you, you you gave me just a part of it, I think, and also like not from the beginning, but a bit later, it was some, some like you had some strategy, I suppose, <laughs> not intentionally. <laughs> thing but but uh, something but uh, but, but uh, yeah i mean it it it, it was uh, it was uh, i mean it, it, it was already like a script you know there was like all these things are happening in, in his life and and uh, i remember the first treatment i wrote that basically just formatted the interview in just a kind of a script yeah. format and the format for me that was the first treatment obviously when writing uh, further on it was you know, new things came and and uh, and as it does. But uh, this story had everything in it. And and basically, I was sometimes I may, I was maybe changing some things so it is not so you know 100% this person's story because we were trying to to find him. But but uh, all the contacts and all the telephones we had uh, were gone basically and unresponsive so so uh. i couldn't really ask this guy can i make your life story so so but uh, also kind of uh, a few years later yeah it was 2015 january uh, with uh, bogomil uh, the dop of this film bogomil godfrejo uh, the polish dop we went uh, to Belgium for, uh, for for a week's, let's say, a research trip, and 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 there we didn't have to really look far because we just found like uh, randomly going to a meat factory for location scouting. We found uh, a brigade of ten uh, Latvian uh, pig deboners, and and so we went to their home and and we're talking about uh, you know what we're doing here why, what's the story about and and they gave us even more kind of uh, details about life in, in in this sphere sphere and so yeah i mean it, the first impulse and the backbone was this true story this interview which came then it kind of this flesh from 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 other stories came around and and then of course things while writing and also with valentin uh, working i mean we we brought in also things because i mean i don't know if 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 you know if you know but the way we work is basically you know we there's there's i think there's quite a lot of kind of um uh, uh, space on the set for for the actors to 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 develop the scenes 
and and then so so if we felt that okay this is not working we were trying something else and 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 always was the question can we do it better can we do it better what can we do better and and uh, so so that uh, so that basically it's interesting for us also on the set that we're not just filming the pages and and therefore you know filling filling the minutes so um, so yeah there's a lot of elements i mean the cast i think was the final most uh, important because Valentina Zoleg, um, David uh, Ogrodnik as Andrzej, uh, Anna Prochniak as Margosha, and uh, Guna Zarinia as Zita. I mean, all of them brought major things to the story also, and, and as characters and as actors. So, so yeah, so yeah, it's a, all of these elements came together. I'm so sorry, Anna. Still... No, go ahead. I I didn't I never had a chance to uh to ask you so you lost the guy yeah he didn't you don't know if uh, whether he saw the movie or not I don't think he has I don't think mm -hmm. he, uh, uh, because because I mean we were looking for him but uh, but I never met him uh, the journalist uh -huh. didn't, but uh -huh. uh, but uh, he had uh, had news that he went to work to Scandinavia or somewhere you know so so. Uh, um, Mm -hmm. yeah. So from the way that you describe kind of working on set and building this world, it seems like you let people, like you let it kind of unfold naturally. So you, you, is it like half improvised or ha what kind of directions do you give to your, um, to your crew and your actors? Because I understand like the camera itself is also very flexible. It's not, it, it kind of moves with the story. Valentin? <laughs> Yeah, I think we I think we just drove uh, our DOP crazy with our improvisation because because Yuris were, really was like very open to this and uh, basically every take could be different and so our um, wonderful DOP Bogumil who was just running around us <laughs> with the camera and just tried tried to catch some 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 good shots and and I think he did a great job actually. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Yuris uh, one of his. You can tell it is also, but like one of his, uh, how, how how should I say, fame, uh, favorite, like maybe, <laughs> no, favorite tricks was like when you are, you have a scene with a partner and then suddenly just before the take, you 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 see Yuris come to the to your partner and whispering something in his ear. You, you can be sure that something will go definitely not the way it is written in the script. And okay. you just, it just surp surprise him. Something like that. It's just so one, it was... one, once I did this and he got a slap basically, and yeah. that's why he's always mentioning this. <laughs> no, no, no. You told me, <laughs> but, it was but such you... a necessary slap. <laughs> well, you, but you, you told me, uh, you told me this also in scene with Guna and also uh, Black. You had plenty of those, all those things. I, I got slapped once, but, but <laughs> <laughs> there was plenty of interesting uh, moments. Then actually, it was uh, it was uh, for me it was very convenient because uh, I don't have a lot of a lot of, a lot of experience in in cinema acting. So, uh, but just improvising with good partner like for mostly it was David. So it was easy road, you know, like uh, well Bogumil catching us with with the camera and and David's like acting perfect, like very very good and and. Uh, He's a good partner, so it was quite quite easy. We had some really long takes, right? Like for six minutes, I think. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, Even longer. Mm. Uh, hmm. Yeah, sometimes See, completely surprising. <laughs> You've mentioned the cast a little bit. Can you talk about some of the other the other actors? Um, you mentioned Gunazarin and uh, David. How did you settle on them? And everyone from a different culture as well different languages i mean for me that is like the one of the most important things because uh, i mean i also write my own scripts and and uh, and these scripts usually come out really boring uh, because i leave a lot of space uh, so that we can uh, bring in during the shooting also and when I when I go um, and, and choose the actors for these parts, I really am looking, you know, for for someone really who can do this job really good. And and uh, I mean, so it was really important to 
to have this kind of synergy between them. And uh, the first one which I chose was uh, Valentin, of course, as, as the lead actor. And then I was looking, you know, how who's going to suit him. And, and we had, a, I think it was summer of uh, 2016 when you came to Riga, Valentin, and, and we did a little impro with uh, Guna already then. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Guna was talking Latvian, uh, Valentin was talking Russian, and he didn't know Latvian, so he didn't really know what Guna is saying. But they were really, you know, uh, I have this scene somewhere on my on my hard drive, and uh, I, I watched it once after the film, and you know, you can see that they really are, you know, connecting. I mean, as as actors, they really understand the game, and and then she's wonderful. Of course, mm -hmm. I mean, Guna is fantastic, and 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 also also uh, the the Polish gang, you know, uh, David Ogrodnik, uh, and uh, I saw uh, in. Uh, I mean, he he wasn't either, but that wasn't my my uh, the film why I chose him. I I, I uh, he was in this uh, Polish film, The Last Family, and about this this uh, artist in the in the in the in the eighties seventies eighties in Poland, and he was the 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 son of this artist. And for me, this character was the was the most visible one, you know, because he he was finding so many great details about this character and and maybe that's the script maybe that's the direction but but on the screen i was seeing this actor really you know get, bringing something really new uh to to, to uh, not new but uh, fresh you know on the screen so and and uh, and anna prochniak i saw in one polish blockbuster and and she was also i mean i really wanted a kind of a screen presence from from these actors so so I, so so it's 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 uh, it was it was basically a combination that 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 needed to work for the script to work because the script is quite plain and and uh, and and uh, so you know we are on the set also making a new draft let's say of the script and 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 uh, and the final uh, really important element is also our DOP, Bogomil Godfreyov, uh, because he's, he's a master of, of these improvisation uh, shots. Uh, you know, when, when actors are really doing something that he doesn't know, you know, that will happen, but he's so flexible, he's so fast. I mean, he's so really ready to, you know, just jump out of the car if it's not planned to jump out of the car and, and jump on the train if it's not planned to jump on the train. And and he's not, he, you know, he's always thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm getting the shot. And I think if there's such a thing as an actor's DOP, I think he's one of them also, because he's really, you know, working with the actors also. He, goes to the actor how you're feeling and you know try to feel the actor personally because it's kind of what's the what's the temperature let's say on the set and and uh, so yeah all of these things you know needed to work <laughs> for the script to work so, and I think it's interesting as well, the, in terms of the location you've chosen for to set the film, because it's, I don't think in terms of, you know, modern day slavery or these kind of illegal, illegal workers, you wouldn't necessarily think of Belgium. But it is interesting how that, like, when you do think of Belgium and Brussels, you think of uh, EU and international, you know, politicians in suits walking around. And then this is kind of a, it mirrors it because it's also super international. And then your film set kind of mirrored that it was like a third layer, which was also very international, but kind of on a hidden, hidden level. So why did you chose, why, why did you choose Belgium instead of like, uh, I don't know, or, or do you think that this exists in every single country? Uh, and it's just, you wanted to highlight. Well, the real story happened in Belgium. Uh, that's right. that's where it came from, and and for me that was also one of the triggers. Let's say because for me it was exactly as uh, what you were saying. You know, for me Belgium was stereotypically an EU institution country, but that was just my ignorance because I never had really been to Belgium before. You know, I was maybe in Brussels or some you know some very touristly place, but it actually, if you look behind the curtain, there's a lot of this uh, happening, and you can see it on the streets and 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 uh, and uh, i think now it's even more happening uh, because of what was happening in syria and and and, uh, and all the refugee crisis i mean there's even more vulnerable people 
then it was uh, uh, then it was uh, seven eight years ago when this story of Oleg was really happening on the streets of uh, Belgium and on the streets of Ghent. I mean, even when we were filming, remember Valentin, we were filming in the Norda train station. There was, was there shocked. Was, it was it was shocking because it felt like a, it, like a war, like a war country because there was some kind of influx of uh, refugees in the main train station. There was suddenly the army with rifles running around. Yeah, there was there was in one corner there was blood. And and suddenly we were feeling really scared for the crew because it was it, we didn't feel safe, you know. And like it was the first day when we came to Brussels, and like for me it was like a, I was completely completely shocked, like just yeah. what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I, I think it's just you know it's a cliche thing that uh, you know this is happening only in kind of you know these. Uh, Ireland and UK, you know, which is stereotypically yeah. kind of the Eastern European uh, basis for for work, working, and 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 I think it's happening everywhere. You know, it's just a matter of seeing it. But I also right. like the I also like the idea that it's uh, Brussels, like you know, the heart of uh, European Union, like and it's like the small guy, like uh, the, just the ordinary guy, comes goes there is, is seeking for for for. Uh, wealth i know for for luck for for happiness and like like our small countries are doing the same like they're trying they're looking there trying to get something from them and it also this i, I like this illusion also mm -hmm. the eu dream <laughs> yeah yeah so i believe i saw somewhere that the film has also played in brussels is that right so you, yeah. you mentioned a little bit before that, you know, people come up to you and say that they recognize themselves in the story, but um, do you want to talk more about that? Like what kind of reactions you've gotten from audiences or kind of privately, like both of you, does it differ from place to place where you screen? Like how was it received in Latvia? How was it received in Brussels? And... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, for me, yes, for me, yeah, the mostly, mostly, I got some good words, good words about about acting, but it's like you know, it's it's probably normal because when a, per a person doesn't like your acting, he probably just won't come to you, won't tell you this. And like, why should we? But uh, I really was uh, this. This was uh, also a shocking uh, thing for me when I, like I told you, my cousin just suddenly called me and said that, how do you know? Like, why, 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 how, how? And uh, because he didn't, he had hadn't told anyone that this happened to him. Not th maybe not this, not this strong, like not this cruel. But still, it was like he told me the story immediately. I came to him and like just come on, tell me. And and it was like a crazy story actually. And uh, also this thing that he he didn't tell anyone because it's hard to tell. Like if you are a man and you were like. How to say um, uh, the word? Uh, well, it's not a pleasant situation to be like as a man, like when you are so weak and so so vulnerable. So you come and just you like, no, it was okay, like, ah, okay. They just didn't pay me, but so it was okay. And also when uh, when we had a premiere in, in uh, Lithuania, uh, there was a woman who works with uh, like in crisis center, I think, was helping the people who get in situations like that and her reaction was very uh, interesting for me because she was like you know she was uh, shivering after the movie and she was she was also we had a and a also and, and she said that you know I, I I've been working for 20 years with like stories like this I, I hear them hear them every day but and I was when I came to the movie, I, I thought, well, you won't uh, surprise me. Like, come on, like, just it won't be like so, so strong. But on the contrary, like, uh, and she, she was trying to understand that. And she said, maybe this is the, the, the strong, like, uh, the force of, uh, of art and of cinema because it was even stronger. It just hit her so hard. She was almost crying and like, uh, she was talking a lot about this problem because no one, no one speaks about it. It's like you know, it's uh, no one wants to hear about this. And and she, she was asking like, 
to uh, our producers to give this movie to her so she could show it somewhere like just people to understand what's going on because they can't explain that like they can't you know and also this, she mentioned the problem that pe people mostly men like they just don't tell about don't don't tell anything about this and uh, yeah it was i then i realized how how big the problem is actually because i was not uh, i was not uh, into this problem so much i just i was my main main thing was something else this like small small person completely like alone and uh, like i had i had plenty of things to to think about but i didn't uh... well okay <laughs> Yeah, I think a, a more experienced uh, uh, just recently because the film uh, uh, just a uh, few weeks ago was on the premiered on the national TV and uh, and I've got uh, many how to say uh, uh, many people are saying to me you know I'm really scared of watching this film because I think it's going to be so so. Uh, painful for me you know for for the viewer that it's going to be so uh, dark and 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 so but but when they watch it they say ah but it wasn't actually so you know so, so dark but but yeah but it's 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 it was very realistic you know it wasn't anything fake and i think i mean i've been really thinking about this because uh, um, in cinemas in Latvia, the film didn't really do very good last year, and and I think that one of the reasons was that people were afraid to go to a really dark and depressing film. Uh, but if you see it, actually, you know, I don't think it's really that depressing. I mean, there's also humor in the film, and but anyway, I mean, I think, I mean, the film is 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 very truthful to to its subject. I think that uh, for many people. Uh, this subject is very is a very vulnerable one uh, because uh, for many of us, as, as Valentin, you know, says, yeah, uh, they're just my kids. Uh, so, so uh, for many people, this is vulnerable because their relatives, if then if not themselves, but their relatives have experienced not if not the same, hopefully, you know, but but very similar stories that. They go abroad and and they don't really want to know and want to see what their friends and relatives are experiencing there because they know it's not really great. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's one thing is you know being away from home and and sometimes also leaving your kids with the grandparents and so on. But the good thing is you know there's money coming home and so on. But but they don't really want to see the real picture and and that's what what i also in one of the previous questions uh, i was saying that i mean this thing is happening everywhere the, the the it's just the question if you want to really look at this problem you know and if you really want to look in the mirror in a way as a, as a society as a country you know so so i'm getting i'm getting these feedbacks that people are really afraid to start to watch it you know but there is this satisfaction when when they finish watching it you know because it it's it's i mean the i mean the film is not so brutal against the the audience i mean it also takes care a bit of the audience you know also, so, so. the real story was uh, more cruel as i remember actually it was it was, it was even a bit more. Uh, more more of that i mean the real world is is even more brutal than, than, than. but that i'm saying you know that people are scared of actually accepting that things are happening like this because for many of us you know there's friends relatives uh, uh, in these situations in similar situations and and we're somehow you know turning the blind eye because we don't really want to feel bad that they're they're going through this you know i mean i understand from the ones you know if it's if it's striking someone personally but what was it like you know i don't know in in a wealthier country where you've screened like like a France or a Belgium or a Sweden or somewhere where people might not want to give up the idea of this facade, you know, that they're this European country. Yeah. That wants to come. In, in, in Belgium, I didn't really uh, go because uh, COVID had just started and their premiere was very limited. So so um, I didn't meet the audiences there, but I managed to, to meet the audiences in France last year. And and there it was, it was very shocking for them because 
they somehow said, wait a minute, this is happening in Belgium. This is also happening in France. And this is happening in our uh, in our backyards. And, and there was there were many, many uh, people coming uh, and saying that that this is and, and there was never the question, is this real or is this not? The question was, Jesus, this is also happening here, you know, because this is the heart of Europe where this story is happening. So so this is happening also in France, you know, and, and for them, it was kind of a realization also. And I was telling to them, you know, come on, if you go to the supermarket and you see, you know, meat for that cheap price, I mean, you all have to understand that there is something behind that cheap price. You know, you can go to the a biological farmer's market uh, and buy a chicken, you know, uh, costing 10 euros a kilogram, but in the supermarket, it's three, you know, so, so, so the, you have to understand that this price is, uh, is, 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 is standing on someone else's shoulders, you know, so, and, and then they start to, then we start to talk about it and they, you know, they really, I mean, th these discussions really start after the film and, and most of the discussions are, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, how how can we stop it? You know, and and I know that uh, just recently I was I was talking to this one uh, person in Germany where the film was also being shown, and she said that uh, now Germany is also I mean, of course, not because of this film, but uh, eventually because of the pressure of the society that this subject is important to Germans. Uh, German government is already implementing some new kind of measures uh, for for it to, to to kind of fight this modern day slavery, you know, that there can't be these middlemen, which are quite official in, in many European countries and, and, and so on. So, I mean, these things are changing. And, and, and for most audiences, when they, when they watch uh, outside of Latvia, it was a uh, Western country audiences. It was a big, um, big uh, eye opener for some, I think, you know. Right. I, actually, I got a very touching letter from a person who saw it in France, actually. And it wasn't about I I I was he was so like careful in the, in the beginning and I like I just asked him did you experience something like have you experienced uh, something like this and he said no 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 but but uh, he liked something else in this movie like like maybe not the not, not the right word but like he found something else and also not not only this problem but and actually I like it that it's not only about the modern slavery for me it's like much more right. So we, we've talked for a long time already, and, and I think I feel like it's kind of a positive note that we're ending on. But maybe if you guys also want to close out on a few words about your next project. Um, I know, Yudis, you mentioned you're filming next year, but um, since Modris and Olix are very focused on this, you know, they're very character driven, uh, these kind of marginalized men. Is this kind of the vein you're continuing in, or are you making a zombie apocalypse movie? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, yes, <laughs> zombie futuristic uh, movie. Uh, that one I will have to wait. But uh, but now this 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 new one is about it's um, of course it's also character driven, but but it's a it's a more family family driven film because it's about a couple in their in their early uh, late forties early fifties successful. Uh, uh, organ player, musician, uh, and, and, the, and the head of a state company, and, and the wife uh, returning from a concert abroad, um, she, she finds out that the husband has been accused of big scale corruption uh, scandal. And so, so basically it's a story of a, of a family weekend when, when the family is together and when this new kind of elephant in the room is, 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 has come in. Uh, and uh, the, how how they are coping with this idea and how they're managing and how it's uh, evolving this volcano that uh, the 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 head of the family let's say is actually uh, uh, very dirty in 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 the in the money thing um, but it's 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 yeah i mean the the main character is a female this time so i'm I'm done for for these male stories for a while, and I want, I want to look in this female world for now. So I am. Um, cool. Valentina, after your rest, are right, any any new movies we can invite next year? <laughs> Maybe yes. I know the movie. The, the movie that I just uh, we just shot actually. I think it's uh, maybe it will go go to, to somewhere. Uh, <laughs> USA. I mean, because the the direct the director Irma Pujolskaya, she was 
actually learned uh, like how to say uh, she studied in in LA actually and we just finished a movie about about um, anonymous alcoholic guy and uh, and and his 16 17 years old daughter and like the the quite a difficult relationships between them okay interesting well yeah i hope to i'm so, sorry we're meeting like this but i uh, hope to see you both in in uh, either in person in the baltic states or in new york soon it's been really interesting um thank you so much for joining us thank you to our audiences if you've only seen Olek so far please see roma zabrowska's the lawyer as well and sanel tom's truth and justice which are also playing in this series so thank you and um have a great evening thank you thank you kyle you yeah, goodbye <laughs>